We're here with our friends Mike and Joan Riddle. We met them back in the 80s in Key West, Florida. On and off, we've known where they've been. We probably spent three years actually in close proximity to one another and then all these years kind of apart, but always knowing where the other was. But after all this time now, they've settled in Mississippi and they have bought themselves an RV and that's what this video is all about. The fact that finally, after all those years of raising a family and being good parents <laughs> and military, Terry. Mike was in the Coast Guard for a whole bunch of years. About, about 21, yeah. And Miss Joan, multiple jobs and I did and raised uh, an entire family of two girls and a boy. A boy, Tell yes. Us about that. Well, you know, you change jobs often when your husband's in the military. But in reality, you're both in the military. Yes, definitely. <laughs> definitely. So tell us, what caused you to seek an RV? Well, <laughs> do you really want to know? Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't think we want to put it on there. Yeah, but this, this, this is. Yeah. Uh, other folks are watching this that are in the same position she, you were in. Yeah. Uh, we we ago. thought about it for I don't know twenty years, I guess. Yes. Talked about it. And, Long time dream of mine. And and yeah, she was. She was bigger on it than I was. At first, I thought that was a great idea, and then I thought, you can rent a lot of hotel rooms for the price of an RV. I've come to find out you can't have near as much fun in a hotel room as you can out here. Looking at the beach and, you know, well, and, and we've rekindled an old friendship now, and we've got something in common. Yeah, that, that we, spirits on the road. We that, both have RVs right. now. Uh, a year ago, we didn't have one. Two months ago, you didn't have one. Right, exactly. Right. And I know I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and breach this subject, but I know that Joan, it's been a dream of yours for for long a long, time. long time. And Mike, I'm gonna go ahead and throw you under the bus. Yeah. You, you well, got I, to the point where I, you decided. I thought I was too old. Too old for it. Now listen, there's a lot of folks out there who think that way. Yeah. And if you still have your health and you can do it, the point is right. you gotta do it. Right. And right. you might as well do it before it's too late because you never know what tomorrow's going to bring. Absolutely. That's and, exactly you know, right. I'm well, I'm 71 years old next month. I, I look 29, I know, but... <laughs> but I was, I was very apprehensive about driving something that's 40 feet long. And, of course, I've only driven it on a couple of, you know jaunts now for what a hundred miles one time 150 this time or something and uh you know it's not much different than driving a, a car you the stopping distance yeah, that's something you got to get used to because uh, you're liable if you really jam on the brakes you're liable to throw somebody out of their chair yeah and uh, we're going to go ahead and insert a video right here uh, and show you miss barbara taking a ride in a recliner which was not anchored down inside the rv but uh, this was mike's very first trip right here very first, very first time to drive, drive. Found the brakes. <laughs> uh huh. We're live. Sit down. Well, I was, I was doing that cross brake thing, and then they all of a sudden they they kick in. <laughs> so when you use this brake, you do the top of it, right? Yeah. And the bottom part of that brake, you just the foot or your heel. Right now, you can pull that top. Is it's, just, it's just a seat, it's not mounted. Okay. Yeah. What happened, Barbara? You about broke my legs. Did you fall out of the chair? No. You should be more careful. I should be. <laughs> if I had known you was driving. Ah. No, you did fine. <laughs> the seat's not mounted, that's all. So I took a slide. <laughs> and the fact that it wasn't secure to start with before we left is really on all of us because we're all military well the three of us and we know better right we should have checked we know better <laughs> very nice recliner and uh it just you know was it was set in there um you know you want to mention anything about the gentleman you bought this from 
Well, the gentleman I bought it from, Ed, he was uh, he's probably the nicest guy you'll ever want to meet in your he life. Very nice. Uh, I think he just is honest and down to earth is uh, just a nice guy. That's that's all there was to it, and we we both just just wait a minute, we fell in love with this guy. He was He's he great. was fabulous. He's great. He had gotten this RV all fixed up. Him and his wife had been uh, they'd had it for six years. About six years. About six years, and they had one before this. But uh, they'd gone to Alaska and all the Midwest states, you know, Montana and uh, Wyoming, and they, they'd been all over and. Uh, He'd just gotten this fixed up this past spring, put two new air conditioners on it and uh, six new tires and Lord, I don't know what all. He had the engine worked on and he he did a lot of work and his wife's health just, uh, it kind of failed her and she just says, I, I just can't do it anymore, Ed. And uh, I, I know that they were, <laughs> they were very pained by that decision and they, they wanted to get you know, find somebody to, to sell it to that would take good care of it. And you know, we were just, the Lord was looking after us. We were very fortunate. Joan found it online and we called the fella and told him, you know, we're coming that way here in a, a few days. Can, would you hold it for us so we can look at it? Uh, you know, otherwise we would have taken a trip over there. It's only a hundred miles from the house. And he said, I sure will. So, uh, I just, although I don't recommend anybody do it like we did, it was the third one we had looked at. Yeah. So ideally, you do want to shop around a little bit more. However, however, this was in immaculate condition. It was a great decision. And after meeting Ed, we realized this guy was like us. He takes good care of things. He want to make sure everything is in a working condition. Uh, it looks good, you know. The, and, and that's well just the kind of guy, of. just the kind of guy he was. And of course, we were here that weekend to visit with you guys. I asked you to go over and take a look at it with us. But they were the experts. They'd had theirs for six months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were downright experts. We, we were well trenched in the RV lifestyle. <laughs> However, we did contemplate not telling you the truth about it so that once you left, we buy it. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Suffice to say, the Riddle's got an excellent deal. My heart goes out to Ed and his wife who simply just can't do it anymore. Right. But getting back to the point of we're too old to do this. You're never too old to do it if you can do it. If you can do right. it, age has nothing to do with it. Right. And I, That's right. I'm just so pleased and, and just tickled pink that you guys have got you an RV. Let me ask you a question. Lessons learned so far. I uh, know you got to get used to the way it handles. Uh, it doesn't, you know, your reaction time in one of these is not uh, nearly what it is in your personal vehicle. So, eh, little Harry coming through the Mobile Tunnel the other day, I had a tractor trailer rig right next to me, and I was doing 55 coming through the tunnel. Well, he decides 55 wasn't fast enough, and he was next to me, he decided. He was going to go about 65 or 70 down through there. And I don't think we had but about a foot and a half between the two of us. And I was a little antsy in that situation. <laughs> Joan, how about you? Lessons learned. First off, there is a place for everything. And when you take it out and use it, you have to put it back in that place. Because if you don't, it soon looks like a tornado went off in the RV very limited space so you've got to find a place for it put it there and when you use it you've got to put it back so far I've learned that we have a, uh, a, a 99 Fleetwood bounder there's no slide she's considered a wide body uh, but she has no slide she's perfect for me and Miss Barbara mm -hmm. you guys have a 2002 2000 2000 Endeavor by Holiday Rambler and it does have one slide. And considered what, 38 or 39? Yeah. 30. Yeah, 38, 39 feet. Mm -hmm. um, diesel pusher. A diesel pusher. Diesel pusher. Got a lot of power, doesn't she, Mike? <sighs> she got, mm -hmm. yeah. I don't even, I don't even know what it'll do. I don't even want to know what it'll do. It does the speed limit and I try to do a little bit less than the speed limit because yes. that's, that's an awful lot of machine right there. We can't wait till our first trip to Kansas, which is coming up in about 
three two weeks? weeks? About two weeks. Two weeks. Uh, because the, the winds out there in Kansas, you know, they, they, they've been known to blow tractor trailer rigs over and stuff. And uh, so I hope we don't have any heavy winds out there. <laughs> now, when y'all go to Kansas, you're going to be mooch docking, right? Mooch docking. Yes. Yep. Mooch yes. docking. That's where you go to someone's driveway and you use their power and their yes. water. Yes. Don't know who it'll be yet, but we're just going to pull in and plug in. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's no, right. we've got we got some great friends there, and they've got a a, a hookup in in their house and uh, or in you know in their yard for a, a an RV, and our, our daughter and her husband also uh, they live there, uh, and they've got a hookup. But I don't know if I can get this close enough to hook up. Have to get me an extension cord. Longer cord. <laughs> now this is your very first outing. This yes. was our maiden maiden outing. Yes. Yes. In our RV. Now that you've had your RV out on the road, you've taken it on at least one trip. You've also had it in your driveway, and if you're anything like me and her, you were in and out of it. Oh, constantly, constantly in and out of it, yep. Trying to get it ready. I'll ask you first, Mike, what is it? What's the first thing you want to get for your RV? Uh, I want to get the, the Wi-Fi hotspot, the, 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 the TV, you know, where I can find out if we got a storm out here getting ready to hit us or, or whatever, you know. Um, and i got to get a name for her. That's right. Keep, That's right. Keep trying to keep trying to uh, we keep trying to figure out what we should name her. It hasn't come it hasn't to us come yet, to us. but it but hasn't named itself. It yet, hasn't has. come Not to yet. us yet. And you don't even know if it's going to be a boy or a girl. Don't know. <laughs> don't Joan, know. what about you? What's what's the one thing? Your first thing you really wanted? Well, to you know, the first trip, Mike went online and printed off a checklist of things that you should put in the RV, and it was very helpful. Things that the first trip you realize you've got to have a can opener, you have to have a coffee pot. You, it was it was real helpful to go down and check the boxes. However, once we got here, I realized I didn't have a broom to sweep <laughs> off the bat. I have a list on my phone of items that oh yeah, I will need that. I will need that. Uh, but we do definitely want to get a flagpole. Ah, uh, that was the number to one. We want to display the yeah. American flag, my flag and pole the Coast Guard flag. And my Coast Guard ensign. Yeah, and just a few things that, like I said, a broom, although Miss Barbara has taken care of that for us. I was just presented with a broom and a dustpan <laughs> on my maiden voyage, so that, thank you, Barbara. <laughs> I, I, I got to get me a little blower so I can yes. blow the awnings off before I roll them back up. But I've got a lot of... Uh, leaves and bark and and I think these are uh, Live walnut oaks. trees or something because oh there are some the, the squirrels been eating stuff and they drop them on my uh, canopies and I need something to I'm gonna you have to get me a little blower so I can blow them off before I roll them up. Right. I had a good friend of mine tell me that he said you know if you leave those leaves on there and roll them up when you come back out they've rotted in there and they'll cause a big mark on your canopy so good friend that's a good that's right friend. that's good that is a good advice friend. thank you ricky <laughs> so you've already got a list going of things you want. i have a list i do of things and we you need. want a blower and a flagpole and get those electronics yeah yeah that's it okay. yeah and you'll be ready to go well i'm mike and i'm joan until next time rv underway <laughs> thank you ricky and barbara Thanks, guys. Our pleasure. And they'll they'll uh, we'll make a video as soon as they figure out what to name their RV because that's always a big uh, a big deal when you christen your RV. You got to give it a name. <laughs> We're working on it. <laughs>